And good morning. Uh, I guess we're in uh, Austin time right now because we're kind of rolling this a little bit uh, late uh, this morning. But first, I'm going to do the whole stand. I had a check for on live, uh, on live, live. one of those mornings. Seeing if we're live on the other uh, other channels real quick, so stand by. And if you are tuning in, you can hear us. First off, we hope you're having a wonderful morning. Is that oh, right? Yeah. Oh, Absolutely excellent, wonderful, wonderful morning. You're and walking around aimlessly, aimlessly downtown Austin for 25 minutes. <laughs> and then, uh, and if you don't mind, just say hello, uh, kind of uh, chime in and let us know where you're kind of listening from. This is the second ever episode of Coffee and Beans. Okay, we are live. I dig it. All right. So a little background, kind of what this is. Uh, I'm not sure if you know, actually, I'm pretty sure everyone checked out the uh, the uh, the the breakfast runs I did with Tyler Thomason uh, with uh, Uncle Permian yesterday. Uh, that's the hence the background. We're in Austin uh, on this beautiful Thursday. It's Thursday. It seems like every day is kind of two, yeah. divide by three, carry the remainder. And then, uh, so yeah, so pretty much what this is, uh, coffee and beans is, uh, you know, I had a lot of uh, service companies, uh, startups, people pretty much reach out to me and say, hey, look, you know, I'd like a spot on a, you know, breakfast runs. I think that's a great idea, but that's the guests for breakfast runs are primarily operators. So this is kind of a new uh, uh, concept, kind of a new idea to kind of bring the educational side of it. So we're, this is, I'm sure everyone knows this man, the myth, the legend, Ethan Etzel, you legend, uh, the CEO you know, of, are like dead. of Royal Completion <laughs> Tools, uh, some of the, uh, the, the the best cats out there. Uh, they've been uh, such an awesome supporter of, uh, of Connection Crew. Um, proud to have call him my friend. And then, uh, yeah, so pretty much the goal of this is kind of learn a little bit about him, learn about the company. But every five minutes, we're going to keep this about 30, 35 minutes. Every five, and then we're going to open it up for questions or comments or just people chime in and say hello. Hey, you, you think, let's talk about this this morning. So a um, little background. Let's see where everyone's tuning in from. We have Monica tuning in. Uh, good morning, gents. Excited to tune in from the other room. Thank you, babe. <laughs> um, where else are people tuning in from? All right, but okay, I'll tell you what. Chime in, say hello. We'll pull you up on the screen and uh, and, uh, and uh, give you a good howdy. Um, all right, so a little background on this. This is actually uh, my daughter's uh, idea to uh, play this game, bamboozled, uh, during one of the uh, the breakfast run segments that, that, that we have. However, um, th so that's kind of the, the where this started. Can't be too bad. So oh, it's, it's all sugar. Right? It's it's pretty bad. So what this so bamboo's? <laughs> I don't know if people that have out there have played this before. It is this game right here. All right, bamboozled. It's probably not going to focus. That's fine. And uh, pretty much, it's you know, there's as you can see here. There's probably about twenty colors, uh, about ten colors of jelly beans. Uh, five are the safe kind that actually taste like. Cappuccino, buttered popcorn, peach, juicy pear, tutti frutti, pomegranate, toasted marshmallow, birthday cake, berry blue, and strawberry banana smoothie. Well, I hope that sounds good really ones. good, doesn't it? I hope I have all the good ones and you have all the bad ones. I like it. So he came in this morning and he's like, oh, great. So he put all the bad ones on my plate. I'm like, first <laughs> off, I wish I could tell that. All right. And uh, the second one is, uh, so that was the first. So the first colors are the safe colors, the, the colors that we all want to have. <laughs> The colors we all strive for. The second, however, there's sleeper cells in these jelly bean things. So, oh the same colors can also provide liver and onions, rotten egg, barf. Barf? I don't think it was a good idea to do this. Booger, stinky socks. I think my daughter named that. Booger. Old bandage. Awesome. My daughter loves booger. Stink bug, dirty dishwater, toothpaste. And dead fish. So I kind of lined it out this morning how uh, we kind of have the same colors except the, the surprising one in the middle. All right, that's how this is going to go. All right, we got uh, Jared, uh, Jared, uh, core to to and look at sharp gents. Good luck on the roulette, Ethan. Yeah, I know. We're going to need the. It's, have you ever done Thanks, this? Thanks, Jared. I appreciate that, man. Um, no, that's absolutely not. disgusting. Breakfast of champions. We have to eat all of them. Oh, yeah. So what we're going to do, I'm going to kind of uh, talk to you. I want to talk to you, you know, hear a little about you, hear about the company uh royal completion tools and uh we had a great night last night we uh we uh, got together um with some uh, oil field fam out here in uh, austin texas we had a uh, cole thompson uh reed ashy and uh, and uh tyler thomason uh we uh got together uh had dinner and really just started uh, 
developing those relationships was kind of the whole goal of a connection cruise to to uh, facilitate genuine relationships to be made. So that was an awesome time last night. That's great. Yeah. Three great guys. Three. And you, Monica. Great as well. I'll take that. And, and Zach. 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 And Zach. Zach. All right. So Zach there's only three by. great people at the table, and the rest of the kind of <laughs> fringe people that we don't really – that are okay. They kind of pass the vibe check. All right. So thank you for everyone tuning in uh, this morning. Again, I said that already. We hope everyone's having a wonderful day. And uh, without further ado, we will begin. So for the first five minutes, is that my phone? Uh, for the first five minutes, we are going. I wish I had like a timer or something on this yeah, thing. I got a timer on my truck. They're gonna put a boot on that thing, just like they did last. Oh, time. they're serious about booting it off. Awesome. The second later, they're sitting there waiting. Oh, so bad. Time. Okay, so I'm gonna do a little timer. I'm gonna set it for five minutes. So every five minutes, we're gonna we're gonna wait. Every five minutes, we're gonna stop and we're gonna take a, uh, a bamboozle jelly bean, eat it, discuss it, yes. and get back to and get get back on track. Okay, so ready? When you're ready, you press start, mister. Me? All right. Yeah. Let's go. All right. So, again, uh, I'd like to thank uh, Ethan for being brave and uh, and right. joining me on uh, Coffee and Beans. Lost all my taste during COVID, so it doesn't matter. No, I'm joking. <laughs> what? I'm not joking. So I'm the, <laughs> that sucks. Okay. So, uh, all right. So, okay. So, let's start. So, Ethan, why don't you give us a little uh, 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 kick us off. And kind of, uh, because we're going to kind of shorten this about 30, 35 minutes, why don't you kind of bring us up to, up to speed on kind of uh, a little bit, a little history on you, and then uh, kind of how a Royal Completion Tools uh, formed, how you how you started uh, that company. Right on. Yeah. All College right. Mechanical Engineering. I will let's, let's skip the brief, the stuff before. I uh, grew up in Florida, New Jersey, Louisiana. Home is Louisiana. Now it's Houston. I've been here since 2009. So okay, he's going right. say here. We're in Austin. Austin's not in Miami. Not a huge fan of downtown Austin after all this traffic. Situation. I'm not either, bro. Um, but cool city, nonetheless. Uh, it's 2017. Let's skip forward. Hold up so. a sec. Hold up a sec. It's not loading. We had uh, – yes, we are broadcasting. We had Justin Brignett chime in. Uh, try on YouTube. I apologize. I apologize. But this is what happens when you go live. It's Austin Internet, man. This is what happens when you this city. I love it. Everything is the city. Everything's everything that's going wrong today is down this, down it's Austin's city. fault. It's all these California people coming in. It's Cali cats. Um, the cool people out. Yeah, I think. Uh, I don't know if it's is the internet. There's a huge lag right now. Oh wow, that's me waving an hour ago. Uh, I'm gonna do hotspot. Stand by, everyone. I apologize. That's kind of strange, but you know what? This is what happens. I'm having you go live, okay? I'm gonna do this. Apologies, everyone. Please, uh, I don't know why it's like this sometimes. Okay. All right. We hope this works. We just switched from a uh, the Wi-Fi here because it's downtown Austin to my hotspot. So I'm hoping that works. And if you are tuning in, we've, we've, we've got a message from Justin uh, Brignac that it wasn't kind of loading. Uh, we hope it's uh, running okay now. But regardless, you can find all these on... Uh, I ate all my jelly beans. <laughs> Whoa, look at that. Whoa. <laughs> so uh, regardless, you can find this on uh, the CrewTube uh, uh, YouTube channel. So... Uh, okay. All right. So we're going to start the, uh, start it off right here. So you, uh, New Jersey, Florida, Houston's home and mechanical engineering. You said, yeah, yeah. All right. We're on yeah, the clock. Mechanical yeah. engineering, uh, Houston is home now. Been there since 2009. Okay. Oilfield sucked me in and been there since. So where'd you start off in the oil field? Um, in my Swaco. Okay. And, uh, full-time, uh, Smith international. Okay. So Smith. Owns Swaco or majority, 60% of Swaco, then Slumberjay bought them all. And then I moved into Slumberjay. And um, when I was in Slumberjay, I was product line manager, unconventional, um, all the unconventional multi state simulation stuff, um, tools, downhole tools, basically for all horizontal unconventional wells. And um, then as Slumberjay sort of carried that on and carried the uh, Smith tools, helped product line the Smith tools into the Slumberjay portfolio for a couple of years. And then um, 
jumped around with the peak completion tools for a couple of years. Okay. And then, um, okay. and then I went to Blackhawk specialty tools. Um, great company. I it got snatched them. up. Blackhawk. Uh, I remember got, them. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun. It's yeah. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. Good group. Um, of them. Yeah. So, uh, you probably talked to a few guys from Blackhawk. They've spurred off started companies. It's a good, good group of guys. Um, Billy Brown owned the company, treated everyone really well, but All right. um, they got bought out by Frank's and uh, my core companies just didn't align. So I started talking to a guy at, at Baker Hughes, Zach Silva, you saw him last yeah. night. And me and Zach sort of linked up and said, Hey, let's, uh, I think they were going through the He started talking to him when Halliburton was like, just ruined Baker with that fake buyout. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. And then, um, and then uh, GE came in and they, they totaled him. Well, I mean, they're still around. It's, so how did so how did you first off how did you and Zach uh, first meet and have where this entrepreneurial spirit to kind of step out and uh, form your own company and then we're gonna get into kind of what the company is so where did this I guess where did you and Zach's I guess uh, connection start so Zach was looking that I ran into Zach through mutual um, acquaintance and he was looking for the same thing and what was what was what was the thing you were looking for getting away from a companies that were getting bought out by other companies we didn't want to work for okay nothing against frank casing love great company one of my good friends i grew up playing tennis with him his family is uh is part of frank's family you should never marry a tennis player because <laughs> because to them love means nothing but my core competency is just didn't align. I didn't know the offshore casing business. And I'm that puts me what 10 years behind. Or yeah. However, so I want to stay aligned with yeah, however long. <laughs> Eleven years. But uh 17, anyways, we started this thing in 17. I left my job. He left his job um into 17. He's uh he's a PE design engineer. We set down, I'm product line guy pushing out, we set down, put our minds together, tried to create a chassis for a frack plug that was to be the most reliable frag plug on the market. So um, before we kind of get, so let's, I want, I want to pause and kind of, again, uh, uh, back up. I mean, because this isn't just, obviously we're going to be discussing, you know, the frack plugs uh, that Royal Completion Tools has and kind of the company and where y'all service and how people can contact with you. But this, this entrepreneur, it's also kind of the origin story. You know, mm -hmm. we have, you know, oil field service, we're going to be having startups, we're going to have tech companies on here. I want to, I kind of want to discuss and get into kind of like, where was the, uh, that entrepreneur of fire. Have you always had uh, that? Uh, the, the, it's not even risk taking. No, I have ADD, so I got I to do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Bit of <laughs> right. so, I mean, I'm on a board at a software company. I, I did a multi million dollar real estate project with another friend of mine. Really? So, yeah, we finished that, finally finished that out a couple, two, three years ago. Okay. Um, That's the timer. Here we go. Ooh. All right. So we're pausing entrepreneurial spirit and you tell me which way which one are we going? We're going with the green first? Let's do this ugly one first. This this one right here. Yeah, the green one. All right. The green one is either booger or <laughs> or juicy pear. And honestly, I'm not sure you even want to do this this early, but here we go, buddy. All right. Okay. Juicy pear. Juicy Either pear. juicy pear or boogers aren't that bad. Okay. All right. All right. We're being real here. Okay. We're, we're, we're peeling back the curtain, getting real. Okay. I got juicy pear. I'm good. Yeah, that's definitely juicy pear. Okay. Good. Juicy we're good pear. to continue. All right. Let's start this timer again. Are we both lucked out there? Both lucked out. You know, that doesn't happen. That's so is, called, this, is this one packet or did you just pull from this? Packet? Oh, bro. I ordered like seven packs. Once I had this idea, I ordered like oh. seven of these. Oh, my well, God. I'm just going to keep doing them. But it's good. It's from the same packet. Oh. Yes. Okay. Yes. That is correct. So we could, we could luck out on like. Odds, well, know, we just looked at on one. I'll take nice. that. I'll take that. So, mm -hmm. okay. So the entrepreneurial spirit, starting your own company, getting with Zach. Um, have you always had that kind of, um, again, you, you talked about the. I wouldn't call it an entrepreneurial. I just get bored with stuff. Okay. You know, and I had to do a lot of different things growing up. played every sport imaginable, basically. And, yeah. you know, I tried to tie in every, I so many different groups of friends, elect, eclectic groups of friends. I'm just, that's my attitude. That's how I've always you just You just get along with the person. It doesn't matter kind of uh, what category they just get along with the person. Yeah, the good person. And, and not just that. I, I was financially stable. I was I, I stayed single forever. All so, right. I mean, I, I just got married five years ago. Yeah. And you have <laughs> another, 30, 30 years and old. you have another little angel on the way. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. yeah. A little yeah. second one. 
Yeah. And then Zach, his uh, business partner, just had his first baby about two and a half months ago. We were talking about that at the table. Mm -hmm. So he's still kind of in the woodworks. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's still, he's <laughs> he's still in the sleep out, deprivation man. zone. <laughs> it is pretty funny. But, um, yeah, no, uh, always been that way. So so you decided to kind of uh, – so talk to me about um, – uh, uh, first off, where the name Royal Completion Tools come from? Uh, so we wanted to name our products after chess pieces. And – why? It just what hadn't been done in the market yet. Okay. Right? So we started, created the logo, started, you know, you have a, you only have like a several chess pieces. You don't want to call something the pawn. And here's the so, logo, everyone. <laughs> that's it. Is that the old one? No, that's it. That's it. It's just the one on the, one on the left. Yep. That's All right. There we go. That's All right. right. Yep. So I uh, started, we got three different. Three different plugs now. So you got your uh, king, knight, and bishop. And if we keep expanding, I don't know what we're going to do. Pawn. But no one's going to buy a pawn plug. You know I what know. I mean? I hope not. I, mean, I don't think so. If you, if you, last year, if you priced it low enough, oh, I don't know what you go for that. Man, yeah. Give me that. hundred bucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how did y'all, I guess, set on the idea of uh, seems like, and I want to. I'm going to get into the kind of the uh, the differentiation of uh, royal completion. But how did y'all decide to go with uh, plugs? We've been uh, doing it forever. So Zach's been doing it since the beginning of his career, and I've been doing it merely since the beginning of mine, 2008. I did the, I had the, I dabbled in the wireline, cold wireline background, and the cold tubing mill out background, and I handled the, all those products and more with uh, Smith. So, okay. I mean, so it's, I, it's something y'all knew, you were comfortable with, yeah. you were kind of okay. All right. Great. And there's a lot of red tape in uh, these larger companies. Um, so, we can sort of cut through that red tape, get things done faster, tweak a couple things here and there for uh, for customers. Where and so you can kind of customize yeah. uh, the, the the requirements or re request from the, the customers. Yep. Pretty quick and relatively short. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you have a being a small company, you have your uh, you you have your pros and cons. You know, cons. I don't have fifteen million dollars to throw at something to put like a hundred million or not. 100 million, not yet. Put like, put like you know fifty thousand plugs on a PO. Right. For, because right now we know everything's blowing up and it's like we could just stick that on the shelf. It'd be nice because supply chain is really becoming an issue. But we we think we figured it out. Okay. So, yeah, All right. Yeah. All right. So y'all started it's the company in 2017. 17. Okay. R&D the first year. So all R&D. When you start from scratch, you can't just like pull something else in. And we started from scratch, wrote a couple patents. Um then we, uh, I think it was 2018, we came out with a plug. Um, we ran into some wells, ran into some issues that could, we, we were in our version three, beginning of 19, we got to our version three. There were small issues, but there are things that we could see that in certain scenarios, they could have, uh, they could be bad scenarios. So we wanted to eliminate those before they even happened. So, okay. So you're trying to, you're trying to figure out what, uh, some issues kind of get ahead of the ball so yeah. so we had one issue with pricing okay right we had too too long of a plug too it was a 10k it was a 12 12.5k 12 uh 12.5 ksi if you want to call it that uh 300, call it 350 400 degree plug is just too much but we did develop a good chassis out of that and found the right material vendors so from that we had to go to a smaller shorter more competitive plug in the market that's where everything was headed so we did that and when we did that. We ran into some uh, a couple issues with uh, with wells necking down, okay, and going at certain velocities where you could potentially, if you caught the right way, could catch something uh, and preset a plug. So we ran into that, and then that was in eighteen. We changed everything. Brought brought on. I mean, we did it. Did a bunch of things. No need to get into detail. To where in two thousand nineteen, two thousand nineteen, we've been running with our V three plugs. It's been so so. Okay, first let's, let's let's do this, and I kind of want to get into those uh, three. All right, so the next one we're doing, the next uh, bamboozled bean we're doing is what you pick. You pick the color. Um, let's do this brown. Ooh, not the brown one. Let's we're gonna do have this one right here. All right, the uh, this one, this one is either God, strawberry banana smoothie Ooh. or dead fish, dude. Dude, I, I could Ralph, man. I could yeah, Ralph fish. too, but that's the point of this. We want you to Ralph. Um, we probably should have had a puke bag somewhere, but all right, here we go. All right, cheers, buddy.
I think I got strawberry banana smoothie, but it's still not really good. Strawberry banana smoothie. You did? You always tell no, me. No, hell no. That was fish. Excuse my language. That that's I can smell my breath, dude. I killed someone. All right, good. I think I got strawberry banana smoothie. I'm good. All right. So you got dead fish. You know what sucks about this? Dude, dude that's horrible. It doesn't go away. No, no, it sucks in your, it's sucking your teeth. Listerine, Monica. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it bad? Yeah. That was pretty bad. Okay. All right. So you couldn't tell initially, but once I swallowed oh, it, it gives you like a, there's like a 15 second lag where it kind of tastes like hints of boat to start with. And then it kind of full throttles one direction or the other. Dead fish. That brings me back. So memories went back, went back to offshore fishing, just chumming. Oh. Chumming the waters when it's real choppy. Have you ever been seasick before? I don't get seasick. I don't get seasick once before, and it, that's what it brought me back to. But I, I used to take that. I used to take boats. Uh, you know, when I was working offshore, a couple times uh, when I went out there, I took some uh, crew boats out there. I was fine with it. I thought it was cozy. I'm like, oh, I'll just get some sleep. Like, it wasn't bad, but there are some cats that can't handle that, and that made for a rough time. Yeah, I mean, you got people puking everywhere. Oh, it was bad. Okay, yeah. so two thousand. So you worked out the. Uh, I gotta start the. Uh, that, kind of thing that is gross now. Oh, it's gross now. I know. Stuck on one of my molars. I know that's the point. Welcome to coffee and beans. All right, so you did a couple of variations. You got to twenty. What, what, what were we at? Twenty nineteen, right now? By uh, twenty end day in twenty eighteen. Okay. So I think it, you know we didn't realize how much a company starting a company. We started draining our own wallets and we started looking at each other. I mean, we saved up a ton of money just being single and working yeah. all over the U S for that amount of time. But it's like, you start looking at it and you're like, we need to, like, we need to buy a couple molds. We need to resize. You don't just resize molds. You have to, you know, sometimes you can't, sometimes you can't not to get too detailed, but we had to do some things that cost some money. So we went around and, um, you know, I talked to a lot of friends that had a lot of experience in raising money and, um, raising capital and uh, investors dealing with investor relationships. So we went around, talked to uh, PE firms, talked to, uh, talked to a few other like angel investors. Right, right. So uh, figured that really, we didn't like that route at that point in time. They just want to take control, right? Which there was interest, which was really, really good, you know? So that kind of uh, uh, re-solidifies that what you're doing, you're on the right track. Yes, it did. I if mean, the if interest I, if is there, there, you're on the right track. There would have been like, no thanks, or not taking the meeting is like, you get a hit. So, yeah. But so, yeah. Uh, no, it was, we'd already ran plugs, we're successful. That was uh, when we had a successful plug, then we had to switch to uh, just for the pricing. So, talk to, we, uh, I ended up, I think it was a guy named Ashley Gilmore. Okay. You know, had lunch with him, and um, he, uh, he, he told me a lot. He, he, he helped me out a lot with, uh, gave me some books to read, and, uh, what do you, what do you like, mean, like uh, like slide. business books, stuff like that? Yeah, like okay. like Get Backed, I think was the book he gave me. And mm -hmm. there was another one. I read them and I started talking. I started thinking, it's like, man, I have a lot of friends in the oil field that do well, that actually are director level or higher. I have a couple friends that own companies. Yeah. Really, I mean. Me too. Yeah, really, really big companies too. And uh, let's present this to them in a way that shows them interest that, you know, they're going to make money. Yeah. They're going to get their money back. They're going to make money. And it was a slam dunk. You know, uh, I held one meeting. I thought I was going to have to go around and hold a bunch of, I held one meeting, presented to a bunch of people. And the, the first guy that came on um, was a guy named Tim Stevens, who was uh, sort of influenced by a friend of mine. But uh, once he did, several other people in the oil field and around, you know, these other guys aren't all upstream. He's downstream. You have people in one of the guys on his engineering firm, just it's uh they all just were like, yeah, talked amongst each other. Like, this is a good idea. Let's do it. So, so they jumped in for a smaller percentage, which yeah. still gave us controlling power. And we had enough money to, uh, we had enough money to stock inventory to, you know, make the molds we needed to uh, get going. Let's that, I, I, first off, I really dig that that story. How you started going the traditional route, uh, route to kind of uh, raise funds and raise capital, raise investments. However, uh, you you weren't feeling the uh, I guess the uh, what that would look like, what that would look like if these traditional uh, uh, investors came in. Also, so I really that kind of segues to two things that's kind of been on the top of my mind uh, the past couple of days. Number one. Obviously, it's not in my past couple of days, but relationships, your networks and your relationships allowed you to kind of get, I mean, 
you saw people kind of graduate, you know, or move up throughout their careers and kind of get to leadership positions, accumulate some wealth and all that stuff. So the fact you were able to use your networks and use the relationships that you built um, to really kind of uh, uh, help, help keep, I guess, help keep you all around, go all afloat. Not only that, to kind of move it was, forward. It was that or was take, uh, take some sort of egregious loan out because we didn't have two year trailing. We didn't have profits at that point in time at R&D, right? Yeah. Or we kept draining our own wallets, which, you know, to what point do you do that? Because, you know, in the system, we're an R&D company. You start, you need that money for the whole. But afterwards, you're going to start having <clears throat> chunks where payment terms were, they were horrible. Like, you 180 know, days. Yeah. Like you talk to these companies, 120 days. Really, it's like you give plug. You So you you get plugs in, you final assemble, you're, uh, you have the parts. So the clock ticks for you. You final assemble, you find a well for them, you drop the plugs off or a pad, call it, you have another 15, 20 days wait time, and then you have 60 or 90 days from that. So you're like, okay, cool. I have 30 day terms with these guys. And like, <laughs> well, I get 120, so we worked it, we were, we figured some of that out, but it just doesn't always play out. Right. For us. So we had to deal with that. And then you start looking at it, you're like, man, you know, I'm not gonna just drain my personal life. Right. Working on this. So we bootstrapped everything as long as we could. Then we went that route, which is an awesome route. We know that noise. All right. Which one are we doing? Uh, you picked this time. Last time I ruined it. Um, God, they're all so bad, potentially. Um, I say we just do the – let's get the brown out of the way. Right. Let's get liver and onions or cappuccino out of the way. Ooh, please be cappuccino. Ah. Uh, Oh, okay. I tell you, I've like two bites in. All right, I got liver and onions. Cappuccino. I've not even done chewing. Dude, the more you chew it, the worse. You might swallow it like a pill. No, you gotta chew it. Uh, -uh. the rules are, you gotta chew it. You can't chase it. That was good. Tie into my coffee. That's better than Starbucks coffee. <laughs> oh, almost! I almost did just vomit there. That's what you <laughs> see here on coffee and beans. You get real. Um, look. Oh my god, that's disgusting. I got the uh, the 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 vomit eyes. Okay. Oh my god. Ooh. Babe, I seriously almost just threw up. Two for one. Okay, and if I threw up, that'd probably be the orange one. Okay, so <laughs> all right, so let's so oh. all right. Let's talk about let's talk about world completion tools now, okay? Yeah. And then I kind of want to open it up to people that maybe that are out there tuning in. I'm not sure if they're with, with the technical difficulties, but again, you can find all these on the CrewTube uh, channel and all stuff. Okay, so let's start talking about world completion tools and kind of look in the. Oh, I gotta set the timer. So try. in the market today, um, there are so many different plug companies out. There. Yeah. All right. Was it was it that saturated when you all started? Um, it wasn't, no, but a lot of the big ones dropped out, you know, Weatherford's gone, Baker's gone. So that, that actually, I think it's more beneficial for us. I mean, to have that many, as soon as we put a, as soon as we put our plugs in well to well comparison, I mean, 99% of the time we're winning. So we gain work by people, other plug companies that mess up. Okay. We go in, we, it's an area of opportunity. Yeah. We field trial our plugs. So the more small companies that just start, they come in and try and game work or get in and have issues, it kind of suits us. And yeah. then again, it kind of doesn't suit us because it's it's a mix. Because it, once, a, once a completion manager, completion engineer tries four or five plugs and they're not satisfied, plugs start slipping or you preset this one or this, you don't tag this one and they, they just get tired of crummy plugs. Yeah. Right? So so that, that also leads probably kind of their... Uh... They're, they're, they're jaded. They're distrust they're for jaded, a plug company. Yes, yeah. very distrust. Yes. So you try and present this to people. And like when I go into me, it's just like, just put in the well. Just all you have to do is put, put start five, put five hours, in the, five hours in the well, gain some trust, put a well, move to a pad. And it, okay. that's how we always want our work. I kind of dig that. We keep our customers. I kind of dig that though. So you're not going out there. You're not, you're not jumping in, uh, you're not going in there and over promising the world and all that stuff. You're pretty much just kind of going just to them and saying, hey, just give it a shot. Yeah. Give it a shot and let, and let the plugs speak for themselves. Yep. I mean, we can't compete with some of those plug companies in Midland just slinging plugs out for really cheap. Yeah. You know, and price wise. So that that's 
that's hurt us in the past in the Permian. We're just actually, we've sold through service companies for a while in the Permian. And um, we, we, uh, we just started bringing our plugs to the Permian because the price has gotten right. And, and hopefully things through this whole $110, $115 oil. What was it this morning? 115. Well, you saw that uh, Russia just uh, the capture. That was last night at dinner. We talked about it. It's yep. got that city. So it's, it's not de escalating. Uh, yes, yeah, not good. War. I mean, I'd rather give up my job than go to war. Yeah. But. So we're going to get into kind of the geopolitical thing after we kind of uh, get done with the Royal Completion Tools. So yeah, yeah. the first couple of years that uh, Royal Completion Tools was around, it was more focused on uh, R&D. Uh, getting the right product, getting the right, getting everything, getting the, the testing done. We already knew the vendors, so we had a good background. We knew the right vendors. We knew how to design a plug. We knew most everything between our backgrounds okay. you know, that we needed to do. Now, um, the plug market dynamically changed. When you uh, when you went to back, I think, 15, 16, and 16, people just started going. You know, time wasn't of the essence. You know, people didn't get they had to finish out their leases. Oil was bad. So they go to cheaper plugs that say had dual cast iron slips, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, they went in and they set these plugs and use cast iron on the lower, lower and upper slips. It's, it, you know, it, it holds a place. Right. But milling out is treacherous. OK, so uh, they didn't care. They get work over rigs. They got discounted. uh Prices for people work, working work over rigs because drilling rigs were pretty much shut down. So they could take a good drilling rig crew, pay them, you know, get paid half what you were there. And so having a shitty plug or having a, a plug that's not that high of quality, it wasn't, it, it wasn't, uh, okay, we'll just, we can deal with it. I wouldn't say that's a bad quality on the front end, uh, dual cast iron. I'd say it's just, it's outdated. It's very hard to mill out. You stick coil, you have issues on the back end. So frack wise, maybe you can't pump it down as fast. Maybe there's a couple of features you can't do. But once you set those plugs, typically they're just as good of plugs on the on the front end, if not better. It's just the back end it creates tons of issues. Specific gravity is high, and it's hard to get that up and low. Okay, um, not to get too nerdy. No, 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 that's not nerdy at all. I mean, you're the engineer, not me. So yes, yeah, so maybe you are the nerdy one. So um, first couple of years starting was. R&D and all that stuff, getting the plug out there. And so now with such a saturated market, how do you, how does Royal Completion Tools uh, differentiate yourself? I mean, words getting out there and people who try, people who use our plugs. I mean, we've had, we've had several customers since we, we've had since 2019. Oh, like okay. they, they retain them. No, not just retain. They don't use anyone else. Okay. I mean, this is in different at different reservoirs as well. They know our plug works. <laughs> they know our plug doesn't. You know, they can pull our plug out and get the surface. I mean, we 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 have a customer in the Woodford Shell that uses only our plugs, and that's the hardest one of the hardest plays the mill plugs out in. So you talk about all these dissolvable plugs and dissolvable plug companies saying, "Oh, you have to dissolve plugs. You can't mill them out." Well, that's where we are. Been there for two years and. They're milling out just fine. <laughs> All right. Pick the next one. All right. I think it's a bad idea. This this whole coffee means I think was a probably idea. Yeah. Let's do that. oh it just started that way okay okay all right i, I, I hope in, we're back in my horrible haircut man i need a haircut so bad Whew. dude i time, know time happens Let's well take my vitamins. either let it Things grow out or don't mop. okay well it's loading here look we're gonna keep going it's gonna be it's gonna be fine yeah see it's loading right now this is ridiculous it's like this it's like the internet keeps like dropping the hotspot doesn't work and all that stuff. But you know what? That's that's part of it. We're doing this in a remote location. So we just gotta we just gotta deal with it. Remote. It is a downtown remote location. Okay. Well, it's not it's not <laughs> where we're uh where we're normally at. Um we're not on air right now. Yeah, oh, we, we are. are. We're live. We're live, but however it's not uh, loading. Hey Monica, you have an issue seeing? It's so ridiculous. Okay, back up. okay, we're back up. We're good. All right, so uh, let's do the uh, which one are we doing? 
the surprise guy in the middle. We're doing the middle one? Yeah. No, you don't want to save that. Yeah, okay, we'll save that for the let's end. Let's save that. Let's save that for the end. Okay. Let's do this one. This is an orangish guy. What is this? This is the orange one is either was that barf or peach? Oh dude, barf. Oh my gosh. Dude, I almost just threw up last time. I don't really know. I don't know what barf. So you can see us like babe? Yeah. Okay. Like just <clears throat> all right. On YouTube, I on YouTube it. is it's good if you want to head over to YouTube and check it out. Um okay. This one I'm kind of scared right now. Bar for what? Peak. I got a uh, bar. You got peak? Mm -hmm. I've been living that sin free life, man. What do you think? I'm just sitting around? I, I don't know. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I'm three for one, three, three to one. Oh. Three for four, good, good side, good team. Oh, you're like a spit bucket. Dude, drink some coffee. No, you can't wash it down, okay? <laughs> I'm committing to this, all right? We don't wash it down. All right. So, all right. So pretty much, <laughs> and we're back. So pretty much, uh, there you go. So it sounds to me like, so I guess when getting the word out there and um, having people uh, try rural completion tool, uh, all plugs and all that stuff, mm -hmm. that's more done through kind of uh, getting in front of your current network and getting network and all that stuff. So I guess, uh, um, I guess moving forward, I mean, with things going on right now in our industry and all that stuff, how do you plan to, I guess, uh, um, I guess uh, get a big, get more, get more plugs out? You got to have bigger POs, which we have. Um, you also have to, I mean, you have to forecast and plan for the future. You have to have your consistent customers. Yeah. They can carry you on and make sure. And then you, your goal is to pick up new customer here, customer there. So we have a goal to pick up two, two new customers every quarter. Okay. So, so right. starting, yeah, I, I got a board meeting tonight. That That's one of the goals. So, um, yeah. I mean, it's it, the plugs usually... You know, sell themselves they, once they start using. Once them. you put them in the ground, they sell themselves. You know, we have to have services to go along with it. People will go to go to go to the rig site. You know, pick up plugs, drop off plugs. Some some customers work with us, and they just pass them on for fleet fleets. Okay, so, right. I mean from pad to pad. So I mean, it's uh, it's all different. It, it's unique. Every customer has a different setup and what they want specifics, and it's it, once you get the hang of it, it's all sort of similar. But, so it's kind of nuances here and there. so it's kind of an exciting time for you. I didn't realize that you know the first two two three years is a lot of R and D, and then you know obviously twenty twenty happened, mm -hmm. and that kind of uh, threw a monkey wrench, and I guess the growth, great. the growth aspect. We were rolling all. like everyone else until I, I mean, and I was I took a ski trip to Tahoe um, for a bachelor party. Great time, and I remember getting a like text from people that I know in the service industry, and they're like, "Oh man, are you getting hit? Are you?" Our accounts dropping and like they hadn't yet. And you're like, we uh, but no, we're good. We I noticed, I noticed those were drilling people. You know, uh, drilling always crumbles before completion. Oh, yeah. You know, it's just like, of course, mm -hmm. yeah, prices down, we're gonna stop drilling, finish out this completions, whatever. So, about a month, three weeks later, I think I started getting calls, man. And it was just like, uh, yeah, so that work we're doing, we're shutting down here. Oh, this way, and you, you just go from like, we were selling a lot of plugs and commitments for a lot of plugs and none. And, um, but we just now we have pat now we have some packers, <laughs> ESB catchers. We're working with a uh, service company in South Texas who who they're pretty good, pretty dang good service company, and um, they're they're running our six inch. We have a deal with them, and they're running a lot of six inch plug. So it sounds like it's, it's, it sounds like yeah. Look, obviously every everybody got hit, uh, not just in our industry, uh, pandemic and all that stuff. But in reality, that was probably y'all's first eighteen months of. You got the patent, you got the plug, it's working and all stuff. So that was that. I mean, you were kind of, uh, I guess, at the gate to to really see some. I'm assuming some growth, right? Yep, some some growth. But then, of course, you know, smackdown. That's life, baby. Smackdown. You think you got it going? And wham! So it's exciting time, I guess, for y'all right now, just it because uh, obviously the, the the pandemic focus is over. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we hope. Well, yeah, we hope, of course. But um, from what you see in the news, and you know, shops with mask mandates being dropped and all that stuff. Uh, the commodity price is going up. Um, it's kind of, uh, 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 I would imagine, this is kind of like the first year that y'all are, or the first time that y'all are able to 
So I guess stretch your legs in 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 the in the, in the depth that you want. You know what I mean? Like it's the first time that I guess you're mm -hmm. at the gate right now, ready to. You can take some more risk, right? Yeah, I think you could take some more risk. You know, it's always it's always it's always a a question and a risk. You know, it's always a risk analysis question. On, uh, I mean, look at I'm not going to point out companies, but look at some some of the companies in 18 that like bought other companies. Yeah, and just like COVID came and they got ruined. Like yeah, big companies. Yeah, you know, big service companies not buying really. smallers for a lot of money and just like just getting ruined. Stock. I mean public companies and private yes, companies. You, yes. seen, you saw several of them. So they were like, let's go, let's take the risk. And then COVID came, bam, no, no mas. Yeah. And then uh, now we're exploding. It seemingly, you know, it's scary how fast it's going up. Quite frankly. Dude, it's exciting times. I know that it's you've good. been, uh, you personally have been kind of in the shop with with, with your team and your group and your, and your business partners and stuff, uh, constantly working on plugs, getting orders out and all that. So I know you're spending a lot of time up there lately. I'm sure, uh, I'm sure Whitney, and I really love that, but uh, hey, <laughs> got to do what you got to do. Yeah, right, right, right. You go see the field. You go see your current customers you have and long-term customers. You stop by, see the field guys. Yep. You uh, visit the teams, you know, and servers. You got to hit them, hit it at field level and you get an HQ level. You got to talk to everyone, make sure it's good. So I want to talk about how people can find out, learn more, get in touch. Ooh. Okay, here we go. <laughs> this is an I don't, the thing about this, I don't think I'm going to get used to these flavors. You know what I mean? It's not like when I put a vomit jelly bean in my mouth, I'm like, oh, I'm used to this. I've had this, I've done this a hundred times before. It's still going to be disgusting to me. All right. So kind of nauseated from that dead fish one. That's the only bad one I got. I know. That's the point. And that's going to stick with you for the next couple hours. Okay. So we're going to do the, uh, we're going to do the buttered popcorn or rotten egg. Okay. Let's do this. You ready? Yep. All right. Oh, hold up. Hold up, stand by, camera stopped, and we're back. All right, so we're either, it's either buttered popcorn or rotten fish. Wait, rot another fish one? Oh, I'm sorry, rotten egg, oh, silly me. Gosh. I'm such an idiot. All right, ready? This could be future. Oh. Oh. Buttered popcorn. <laughs> Mine's hundred percent rotten egg. Isn't it bad and disgusting? I'm dealing with how I'm gonna swallow this right now. That's what I did last time. I almost threw up. There's a sink over there. You can Well, obviously we're gonna follow him around if he does pee. You can take the camera with us. It'll be a great reality show. Oh, that was nasty. Mmm. Okay, we're good. Maybe. Watch it now, dude. Do it. That was after, that was gnarly right there, man. That's wrong. Kids eat these things? No, it's not like kids are walking down the street. It's a game. It's a game that you do a party. You, you know, it'd be hilarious just like having a little party for like your kid and like throwing a bunch of these jelly beans and what do you think? Mixer bowl and like having them like, oh, jelly beans. What do you think I'm doing for Everly's third, fourth <laughs> birthday party? That's exactly <laughs> what I'm doing. I'll be the crazy uncle oh, that brings this stuff. God. So that was gross. All right. So, okay. So I guess everyone out there, I mean, that, you know, uh, completion engineers, uh, uh, people out there that are kind of like tuning in right now. Number one, first off, how they, how can they get in touch with y'all? And honestly, uh, uh, even if for just kind of just an introduction on stuff, mm -hmm. I mean, I've, uh, uh, and that's the thing, you're not really, you don't push stuff. You just, you just, you, it seems like what I've, our discussions and all that stuff, you just kind of like, now's the time to kind of start meeting people. Now's the time to kind of get the word out. So I guess for people to kind of, uh, find role completion tools, what's y'all's, uh, what's y'all's website? Um, RollCompletionTools.com. All right, and how can they find you? Um, LinkedIn, um, or online. Shoot me a message, or call my cell phone. Doesn't really matter. Doesn't matter. You're always around and about. Yeah, okay. Not, not spitting my cell phone out right here. Though. Do you have? No, I wouldn't do that either. <laughs> do you have any? I guess uh, final uh, thoughts you want to get into before we kind of wrap it up and kind of have a, you know shoot the bull conversation about uh, anything you want to talk about? Like anything you can talk about? The tools, the plug. Where do y'all do? Where, where, where do y'all do service at? I mean, where 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 can where we are in every reservoir currently except for the Northeast? So okay, we, we just we are running our four and a half plug in five inch 23 pound per foot in the Haynesville 
that company switched to five inch 21 four. So now we have a five inch plug. We've actually, we're about the field. We're finding a field trial. We just got plugs in uh, yet yesterday. Okay. So we're assembling and we've tested all, everything's good. 350 degrees. Good. It's a, it's a stellar plug full composite for, uh, for the Hainesville. So we'll be re-entering that market. But once we do that, it, it, we we're currently in all the major. So Bakken, Rockies, Eagleford, um, Permian, and it'll be yeah back in the back in the in Oklahoma too. Okay, Oklahoma. all right, yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay, Midcon, um, sorry, Midcon. <laughs> We're having to Doug Midcon uh, right now. I don't know if you're tuning in from there, but I love uh, Mid okay. All right, so we're having people that can't see all that stuff. So I guess what I'm going to do, I'm just going to share this, uh, uh, the YouTube link uh, for people out there. People are not able to tune in. That's, uh, that's unfortunate. Uh, I apologize about that. But, hey, sometimes you get technical difficulties, and uh, that's, that's what happens when you go live. Um, uh, what, so what's – all right. Is there anything else that you'd like to kind of bring up uh, that before we kind of guess, peel off and give us your final thoughts today? We have our final surprise jelly bean right in front of us. No, I think I think hey, looking forward, there's going to be huge uh, supply chain issues. There's going to be massive personnel issues and uh, people that used to be in the oil field, younger guys. I mean, I know our brothers. We talked about this last night. Yeah, my eight. brother, my brother is a, a directional driller, and a bunch of his friends went to the oil field after college and spent three years busting it in the field and like just. Got laid off during the downturn because no tenure, right? Yeah. See, like people always talk about this gap, this age gap from the eighties. The crew change big, you know. But there's going to be an age gap here too. So I urge young people to get back in the oil field. Just realize you can make a ton of money, stack it away, invest it, don't blow it. And then if there's a downturn and you get laid off, go find something else. But know it's coming back in a couple of years because I don't think there's another place. That you're going to make as much money as fast if you're ready to work. Well, it's the money side of it also, but it's also, I mean, it's it's the industry. I know there's booms and busts, and cyclical and all that stuff, but where we are at now, I mean, obviously there's this push on you know renewables, green deal, da 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 da, da all that stuff. But at the end of the day, uh, the demand's there. So whether you want to discuss it, talk about it, shine the light on yes. it, the oil field's going to be around. That's fine. I mean, I, I there's so, there's so many variables in the oil field. Number one, the infrastructure. There's no infrastructure for anything else. The next infrastructure is natural gas, which is also very good. Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, you can have localized energy through wind and all this other stuff. Solar is getting good. You know, government's really pumping incentives into solar. But it, again, it's how reliable, it's how reliable it's you I store mean, it, you what transport it. Happened, what happened to energy is so far to store energy. And that's the thing. I mean, there's been a huge exodus of people either that are that have been in the oil field for two years, you know, that was the you know the, the, the next generation that you're right, they got out, they went to Amazon, they went to other place. Uh, you know, one of the best people I know um got out and, and he was looking for a job but couldn't find. It. And, he, and he got out of the industry and it just sucks. It sucks, it's it's heartbreaking. Um in, in reality, we're competing against some you know, Bucky's. I went to Bucky's on the way back from Oklahoma City you did. Great. with John Williams, and they're offering <laughs> 22 bucks to start, 401k benefits, and if you're a supervisor, 32 bucks an hour. So what is it? I mean, for me, it's not even about – I don't think it's going to be throwing money at the at the next generation or anything like that to get them to come because a lot of places are paying very competitively. To me, like not a lot of people want to come in and do the work, do the hard work. Big companies have to create a legitimate career paths that don't – you can't tell love that. You, you can't tell a kid who's out of college that – Hey, this is what you're going to do, and there's going to be it's going to be sustainable. There's going to be no volatility in the oil field. You need to start telling people which they don't college online. You know, hey, listen, this is the oil field. You can make a lot of money. Don't spin it right. You know, be smart about it. This this oil field's up and down. And the truth is, if you don't have the tenure, you're probably going to be the first to go unless you're unless you're trucking along at a really low salary and want to deal with it, right? So, I mean. I think being truthful sort of solves everything. You yeah. ask me. But also, it's a question of that you got to be able to uh, people that I see survive in the industry and all that stuff. That that whether their jobs kind of reduced or did all that stuff, they start doing other things. They start, you know, wearing other hats. Oh, how can I help out here? I got out here. So it's really kind of like even engineers. Like, hey, well, I guess I'll just sit the rigs for a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, it's really just the ability to pivot, evolve, and literally just kind of grin and bear it, stay with it. Uh, 
if the option allows you to, but it's not wearing the same hat. Like, oh, no, I just do sales. I'm just going to do sales. Like, or you can try to help out operations a little bit, or maybe learn this, maybe learn that. It's, to me, it's yeah. about kind of wearing several different hats and kind of uh, shipping it when you can. And yeah, it, it sucks. The booms and busts are real. They're, they're a lot faster. They're super cycles versus other um, industries. And yeah, that's, that's, that's a tough thing, but it's like, I'm curious on how we're going to bring people into our industry. And let's, uh, let's kind of, uh, we got, looking, looking back, go ahead. No, 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 we had a thought. Yeah. No, what are your thoughts? Looking back when you're, I think we did a podcast, I don't know if it was two years ago, man. And, uh, you were like, Hey, uh, 30,000 or 50,000 foot view. Same thing. It's not going away. You know, you're going to have your ups and, ups and downs, but if people want to live the lives they're living right now, there's no other energy source. It is close. Oh no, not uh -oh. even close to supplying that. So I mean, it, it's it's not going away. You're just going to be dealing with it. There's so many geopolitical aspects. There's so many different variables that are beyond supply and demand that affect the oil field, and you can't predict it. And if you can, I mean, man, you need to get Elon Musk. You yeah, can you get that wealthy because you can't. You have a you permanent can't. residence in Ibiza. Yeah, <laughs> you can't. So I mean, just understand that you can't predict it i mean we had some good conversations last night about kind of the future of the oil field and kind of personnel and people and, and even even equipment supply sand mm -hmm. you know what i mean i mean it's yeah. uh it's uh, don't get me wrong i'm very optimistic about our industry uh just where commodity prices are and kind of you know the demands i mean there was no all right let's do the last one and kind of wrap up our final thoughts and if anyone kind of wants to chime in chime in. we have someone uh uh Audrey Payne Manning says, I can't find any five uh, five inch 21.4 for my customers. It's been one of the toughest items. Yeah, it's a, it's a hard item because, I mean, Haynesville is a high pressure, high temperature, and most frack plug companies can't handle a 350 degree atmosphere. But well, what, 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 what company can? And Ethan, <laughs> let's go ahead and leave your uh, email, please, if you don't mind. Yeah, no Ethan problem. at Royal, R O Y A L, yeah, CTS.com. There we go. So if anyone's having trouble uh, finding uh, these plugs, for the 350, 5 inch, 21.4, just shoot them an email right there. So let's do this last one and kind of wrap up uh, final thoughts on all this stuff. All right. You have barf, oh, boy. pee. I have old bandage or pomegranate. Okay. Here we go. Last one. I got bedded. Where'd you get? Peach. Oh man, that's so much nicer than the last one. I thought you you were fast to grab the coffee this time, man. It's just I'm I'm done. I'm tired of this. <laughs> I'm sick of this idea. I'm gonna talk to Evelyn about this. All right. I <laughs> said so this is going to Oklahoma, so uh, I'm gonna send provide you our email after this, so y'all can kind of uh, get get in touch. Excellent. Okay. All right. So I mean, I'm I'm first off, no, I'm gonna get to that after. But honestly, this is a uh, I'm optimistic about our industry. Obviously, uh, I love this industry, and um, you know, besides the whole like, oh, we provide energy to the world. Da, 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 yeah, I, I I get all that. To me, it's it's the friends that I've made in this industry. It's it's it's, it's truly the lifelong friends. I remember. My old company, Bubba Smith, he'd talk about kind of like all these old cats he used to sail with in like 80s and 90s and all that stuff. And, and their kids grow up together and all that stuff. I love the community and I love the people in the industry. And I don't think there's an industry like this where you can work this close with your friends. Yeah, I know. It's awesome. And uh, I started in that atmosphere. You know, we, I sort of shielded myself in 2008 and 9 through that little economy downturn, but because uh, I was young and there's a fat, fast track program I was in at Smith, but I, I, I didn't see a downturn until 15, 16, until 15, yeah. 15, 14 happened. So, I mean, I'll tell you what, I mean, it, it was funny because, like, I was like, it's the best industry in the world, and, like, for a good, you know, eight years. But, eight years. but I mean, I, I mean, the thing, the what, the what we're facing right now, I mean, don't get me wrong, we have, you know, 113, 114, it's only going to be going up, I feel like. Um, but even if, even if and we're, it's kind of a, it's a nerve wracking time. You know what I mean? It's, it's a, it's a, either a, a, a glass is half full, glass is half empty type of time. Like, oh yeah, it's, it's there. It's going to be there. The, 
It's a squeeze and all this stuff, but I mean, with the lack of capital flowing in the industry, the lack of popular support, to be honest with you, capital is going to have to change. Capital is going to have to change, and I feel like it will. I think when people start realizing, I mean, those, I think it has that to virtue change. signaling, oh, I don't invest in fossil fuels and all that stuff, that's going to change once they start seeing uh, the cash come in. I, that's how I think. Rightfully so. Rightfully so. Right. And that's their job. A lot, a lot of big companies in the oil field kind of, kind of pull the fast one on Wall Street. From starting in the 2000s. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, <laughs> I'm, yeah. So, so, obviously, but I feel like companies have been operating cash discipline and operating pretty, uh, you know, positive cash flow and all that. So, mm -hmm. but to me, it's like, okay, number one, I mean, yeah, you know, things are blowing and going, but sand issues, casing issues, personnel issues. I mean, I'm seeing projects being delayed because people can't find sand. I'm seeing probably yeah. there's just a lot yeah. of stuff going on. Unconventional's changed drastically, you know. You never had these problems when you had conventional wells, when you had offshore work, because everything was planned out year, year and a half. Unconventional can turn on like this. And the the issue at hand is if you look at a recount right now, you'll see the Eagle for is a hilarious prime example, which it used to be only the Permian was like this. Permian is obviously like this. But you have like your big guys, Conoco, EOG running four rigs or five yeah. rigs. And then you have 15 new small companies with one rig. I love those companies. Me too. That's awesome. But like it's a it's a go at it atmosphere where you can turn on oil and you can turn on gas like this. Pipelines are there. Like oil, like we're set up to grow. Maybe there's gonna be some issues with pipelines, you know, because there's been restraint for last yep. year or so. But um I mean you could turn oil, you could turn it turn the spigot on pretty fast. It's not like you're you're in the Middle East and you just like un undo like make choke bigger and right. you're getting more oil. But you can turn it on a lot faster than you ever have before. So rightfully so you're gonna run into a personnel issue. You're gonna run into ever all the issues of supply chain issues when you're trying to ramp something up that's so massive. I mean everyone uses energy energy. You yeah. and me, everyone. I mean some of the guys outside on the street even use it. Yeah. I in mean Austin, which yeah, the, 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 a lot more there are a lot more guys out there, uh, guys and girls out there living on the street than all that I've noticed. Yeah. I've been here for a Oh yeah. But, Pretty big year. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you, it takes time. We're in a gray area, a, a gray area where people are trying to figure it out, but it, it'll work itself out with time. Everything I think goes. everything works out itself with time. I dig that. Well, uh, well, Ethan, you got anything else for uh, for everyone out there? First, I want to thank you for coming on and being yeah. so brave to do this. Uh, I want to thank you for last night. It was a great group of people. Um, and uh, yeah, it's kind of, uh, that's fine. Yeah. It, it was, it's, it was fun. And that's what Connection Crew does. It's getting the right people around the table and just kind of uh, facilitating these relationships, man. And we, man, we stuck around probably about an hour and a half after dinner was done. Well, it feels it's going to be fun again. Oh, it it's, is. it's, if we, if it's we keep there. it in the right price, it's going to be fun again. You know, you're going to have the SB, the AD, all the events are going to come back too. You're going to have the, it's going to be fun. It's a really fun industry. It hasn't been since 15. You know, you had it ticked up before COVID. It was getting fun again, but this is it, man. It's, it's not four or five years. It's going to be fun. You know what? If I was campaigning, uh, for the, for the railroad uh, commission, I would say make the oil field fun again. Yeah, that'd be it. That'd <laughs> be it. it. It is. I mean, that's life. You want to have a, you want to have fun with life. You want to enjoy life. You know, I know you have a personal life and you you have your work life and you kind of try and keep them separate. But I mean, you can't always keep them fully separate. And that's uh, I mean, if you're not having fun, I mean, you're, point, here, you're here for a limited amount of time. I know. You know, on earth. So it's you're not gonna be on your death. They'd be like, oh man, I should have spent yeah. a couple more hours every day in the office. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. A lot of people do that. A lot of people get lost in the grind. So everyone, I want to thank everyone out there. I want to thank Ethan. Uh, Edsel, the CEO, and, the, and actually, I want to give a little shout out to you guys. I mean, uh, y'all have been extremely supportive. I mean, you talk about going to your friends and all that stuff. And stuff like y'all have, I, I value our friendship. I value kind of, uh, you know, who you are. You know, as a, as a businessman, as a father, as a husband, all that stuff. But I think honestly, as a friend, like I really, you, the fact you support, you know, the the, the the breakfast runs and all that stuff, and I really dig. And you, the thing that you wanted us to set up last night, like I really appreciate this. Board, man, I really yeah, dig it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. You, you bet. It's and it's worth it for us too. It's not just it's not just one sided deal. And I mean, if you don't support small companies, what happens is you you deal with it's, you know, it's uncapitalistic, and you start dealing with large companies, Your and they get they get leverage on you. And that's what's great about America, you know. And everyone that has been forever, you can start a small company, you can grow it to a mid sized company, and you could you can have fun with it. And you're not you're not under the thumb. Of, of someone's services, which in some industries you still are. Yeah, it's almost uh, monopolies in some areas. I mean, Amazon might be becoming a monopoly. I wonder if we can do anything about that. But oh, no. it's pretty convenient yeah. for Americans. <laughs> it's it not convenient. If it's not convenient for Americans, then yeah, they'll do something. But convenient, mm -hmm. no. Yeah. So I mean, it's uh, 
that's that's the way it you mean when you're when i buy things i i, I when i go around houston i like stopping at a store and buying something rather than just going on it and now don't get me wrong i get lazy sometimes yeah but support your small company support your your city you live in and the area you live in and it's gonna, it's gonna be all good you know it's gonna be doing great I love it. Well, everyone, I want everyone to have an excellent rest of the week. Ethan, thank you so much. And if you're a, a service company or you're a, a, a startup or a tech, if you want to come here and kind of showcase kind of your service, your product, or kind of uh, who you are, uh, reach out to me. It's at jp at connectioncrew.com. You also check that out at uh, uh, the LinkedIn uh, Connection Crew. It's, Motley, it's like crew, like Motley Crew. Isn't it? You know what I mean? <laughs> so uh, check that out. If you want to come on, let me know, and uh, uh, we'll uh, get into that kind of uh, what to expect so uh i want to thank everyone for tuning in uh sorry about the technical issues i think moving forward we're not going to have them it's just this it's just this like vintage loft thing that i guess <laughs> shutting off the wi-fi but anyway have a great rest of the week and we will talk to you soon take it easy take it easy and